Hey everyone, and welcome to week one of our Get Out of Your Head by Jenny Allen online Bible study. Jenny, we are joining you. We're together from a distance, which is so exciting. If you guys could only see the situation behind the camera, there's a lot of cameras and lights and screens all because of Zoom. And so Jenny, we are so grateful that you were able to join us today and this week for study. Thank you, Kendra. It's so good to be here. Thanks yes. for having me. All right, Jenny, so we are doing your book, Get Out of Your Head. Um, you wrote this, when would you say, when did this come out, a few years ago? It came out about a year ago, just over a year ago. But of course I wrote it okay. a year before that. So yes, it's, yes. It, it feels like I've been living it for several years, for sure. <laughs> Well, I have loved it. I think this is the third time that I'm going to be walking through it. I think it's a book that you're going to, people are going to come and pick off their shelf again and again as they go through those, the whole thought process, which we'll get into talking about in a little bit. But Jenny, I would love if you could tell our OBSers, that is who we call the people that sign up for an online Bible study. Why did you write Get Out of Your Head? And who were you thinking of when you wrote the book? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm so excited to be a part of this because all of you are precious to me. I pray for you. If Gathering loves Proverbs 31 and vice versa. And so we do feel like one big family here. So it's so exciting to be a part of this. And, and I do think it's timely. And I didn't plan the timeliness of it. I remember <laughs> one of my friends said, um, did you, you know, you couldn't have known COVID was going to happen, but there was a specific time where I knew this was the message I needed to write right now. Mm -hmm. And that's the Lord. And I'm grateful for that because we were headed, headed into a season, not where um, we, we had unusual emotions. I think we all felt anxiety prior to that. I think we all mm -hmm. felt depression prior to that. I think we all felt loneliness prior to that. And we all have fought these toxic spirals. But you know what we had was a season where we actually could stop and think about it and analyze yeah. it and go, man, I don't want to be stuck in this anymore. And certainly it was heightened with all the stress of everything. So no, I did not plan it to come out a month before <laughs> we all got quarantined in the midst of COVID. But gosh, that was very much of the Lord's timing. And I, and I believe he did plan it. But, but I will say, I look back and the, the main reason I, I wrote it was I walked through a season of fighting my own toxic spiral. And most of it, I didn't even realize that I was in one. I did not realize mm -hmm. I was under attack. I didn't realize that there were all these thoughts that were causing, you know, they were really affecting every part of my life eventually. And so the story is I woke up in the middle of the night um, multiple times over the course of um, 18 months. I continued to do it almost every single night. And I would have these thoughts of, is God real? Am I sure I believe this? Um, am I wasting my life? Is it, does it just go to black? And it was really big, profound thoughts, and I kept having them. But you know, you wake up in the morning and you move on and you don't think about it. And, and for me, it was just realizing that, gosh, the enemy was attacking me for 18 months and I didn't fight back. Mm. And, wow. and it made me angry. And I just kind of let, I say, I let him beat me up in the dark. And I, I never even realized what was happening or how serious it was until anxiety began to grow in me. And mm -hmm. I, I actually just grew to where I had a fear of death that was pretty, pretty dark and, and difficult. And I look back at it and, and I could have fought back on day one, right? But mm -hmm. I let it go for so long. And so my passion for this project was to fight for women, to fight for other people, mm -hmm. to see that, that the enemy hates you, <laughs> that the enemy is trying to take you down, and that we actually have a lot of spiritual weapons, scripture tells us, to fight back with. I love that and I love that you share your own story because I think you give permission to women or people or whoever's picking up this book to wrestle with the thoughts that are going on, right? Because you lived it, you're giving people permission to also be honest about where they might be um, with their thought process too. And I think that's one of the most unique parts of the book and of this study that we get to do together as a community. And I know we're very excited about it. And so something, Jenny, that we're gonna do every weekly video um, was actually inspired by chapter six of your book. Um, chapter six is titled, Make the Shift. And you, you do this whiteboard activity with a group of women. Um, and so do you wanna tell a little bit about that, about, the, about what the women pulled off the sticky notes and what it told you and your team a little bit? Sure, so always before I put material into the world, I teach it in a small group in a local setting. And mm. there were you know a few hundred women that showed up at a Bible study that I taught on this material before it had a name and before it was all you know in the, in the form that it is now. And, 
And so I taught it in my local church and, and they, the day that they walked in, we had all kinds of thoughts that they might be thinking and everybody was grabbing the thoughts that they're thinking. And it's interesting because we had a lot of negative thoughts up there and they easily grabbed those. And then we had, you know, little common ones like dry cleaning and all the things that we think about in a given day. <laughs> and of course, we have so many thoughts, all of us, every single day. Science tells us we have anywhere from 6,000 to not, or sorry, um, anywhere from 9,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. 9,000 to 60, I'm definitely on the 60,000 thought <laughs> spectrum. Like yeah, I have I'm so more, many I'm close thoughts. to 60,000. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds exhausting. So, so, you know, it's hard to narrow down our thoughts. And I think, you know, everyone though, grab different words. And what I've seen from roomfuls of women, which I minister to and you do too all the time, is I'll constantly ask questions like, how many of you feel anxious? How many of you feel mm -hmm. lonely? How many of you feel like, you know, you can't um, get out from under the stress that you feel? I'll ask questions like that all the time. And specifically anxious and lonely, those two, it's almost the whole room, almost mm -hmm. every single time. And so you definitely see these themes of, of issues that we're all facing. Wow, wow. I know in your book you write about 70% of our thoughts are negative, which is just an astronomical number that I never understood until I read the words in your book that I was like, wow. And then you, you take a thought inventory, which we'll kind of talk a little bit about some practical exercises in your book in another video that you guys will see in the weeks to come. But um, this whole activity inspired our team um, to really address the girl that's struggling with something very specific in each weekly video. And so these segments are going to be called To the Girl Who and they are directly pulled from the negative thoughts that we think because we want to encourage you, if you are um, the girl that we are addressing in these videos, we want you to feel encouraged, equipped, and ready um, to fight the battle that might be going on in your mind. All right, Jenny, so our first To The Girl segment is going to be addressed by you, and so I would love you to address the girl who thinks her situation won't get better. Okay, <laughs> that's hard. And the reason that's hard is because I think this is the number one lie most of you believe. Most of you believe I can't really change my mind. There's no power or authority that I've been given. So that's where I go to scripture. And let me go to 2 Corinthians 10, where Paul is gonna give us authority. And he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Let's just stop right there. You have been given divine power by God. A supernatural God has given you supernatural weapons to fight the enemy with. The first thing you gotta realize is you are fighting the devil. He is real, he is alive, he hates you, especially if you love Jesus. He hates you. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy from you. And so of course he's gonna try to bind you and put you in strongholds. But this book tells us clearly, this book tells us clearly that our God has given us authority over the enemy and over our thoughts. On down in that passage it says, so therefore we take every thought captive. We have been given power to fight the enemy, to fight the darkness within us, and the light is stronger than the dark and we have to believe it. That is so good, Jenny. I have a feeling that these two of the girl segments are gonna be some of my favorites that we've ever done just because of the truth that you talk about and the way that we're gonna help girls get out of the strongholds that they may be facing. And so, Jenny, we have a saying around here that we close out every video, every podcast. It's because we really believe it. And it's when you know the truth of God's word and you live it, it changes everything. And that's exactly what your book is all about. And we are gonna change our thought processes and I'm excited to do it alongside you. And so everyone, we hope you have a great week one.